Okay, so like we said, this is AIM 5.5a. We will spend two class periods on this topic. So what were the different impacts the Pax Romana had on ancient Rome? Uh, and that's what we're going to be getting into. So here we go. All right, I'll give you a second here. Okay, so the Pax Romana. The word Pax, P-A-X, is Latin for peace. Okay, so this is a period of Roman peace, Pax Romana. So the Pax Romana is signified by this a series of five, quote-unquote, good uh, emperors. So these are emperors that provided um, leadership to Rome, and Rome kind of flourished under their leadership. So this is essentially a time of peace and prosperity. So these five good emperors spanned about 200 years of history, and this is called the Pax Romana. So um, this is the year 27 uh, BC or BCE uh, to the year 180 AD or CE, and we'll go over those. Um, so uh, this kind of straddles the birth of Christ, uh, the year zero, right? So we're going from before the birth of Christ to uh, kind of common era. So we're, we're kind of hopping into modern time here. Now we're going to start counting upwards. Um, so during the Pax Romana, uh, this ended corruption in the government. It created a whole bunch of government jobs known as civil service jobs and kind of uh, brought about a uniform system of law and justice throughout the empire um, that lent stability and order uh, to the um, the empire essentially. So with good leadership and a stable society, this is when we start to see really significant achievements um, culturally. And that's really what the Pax Romana is all about. It's cultural achievement um, amongst other things, but that is kind of the hallmark. So all of the famous things that we associate with Rome, uh, they come about during the time of the Pax Romana, at least most of them. Okay, I'll give you a second here. So I, when we talked about geographic expansion, we talked about how the Roman Republic, which controlled just really the Italian peninsula, then went on to go on and conquer Carthage, which was that um, empire across the sea in northern Africa. Well, we kind of skipped over the rest of the story world where Rome kind of expands to cover all of Europe, basically. So um, everything from Great Britain all the way towards, you know, the Middle East, uh, getting into Syria and Iraq and, play, you know, getting towards places like that. So the Roman Empire is in control of all of this. Um, during the Pax Romana, Rome will develop their road system, which they are famous for. Now, I think roads are something that we probably take for granted. And it's not necessarily something that we think is particularly important. But in reality, roads, you could make the argument that road the road system is one of the more critical elements to Rome's success. So safe roads uh, help increase and improve trade and travel. Um, and this helps communication and government and so on and so forth, right? So the road system facilitates the movement of goods and which boosts the economy, but also um, with an empire that is so large, governing a large empire can be very, very difficult. So you have to streamline communication. And needless to say, this is prior to the telegram or the telephone or anything like that. So all communication is kind of done in person or, you know, or you know, by, by letter writing, but those letters need to be delivered, right? So they don't have a modern mail system, so they need to be delivered by hand. And the road system facilitates that communication, which is so important to government. So uh, a lot of the roads that were engineered uh, during the time of the Pax Romana are still intact and in use to this very day, 2,000 years later. So um, I think that kind of points to uh, the engineering success uh, that was prominent during the Pax Romana and other times of the reign of the Roman Empire. So engineering in general is going to be one of the great successes of the Roman Empire. Roads are the foremost example. Other examples are aqueducts, you know, which um, facilitated the delivery of fresh drinking water, you know, potable water to vast majority of Europe. 
Um, so in a lot of countries today, there are still ruins of aqueducts that were erected during the time of the rule of the Roman Empire. So a lot of this stuff can still be seen today. So this kind of all lends to prosperity and stability. So the roads kind of facilitate economic growth, and that economic growth leads to uh, prosperity across the Roman Empire. All right, I'll give you a second here. So as society in general becomes more stable and uh, the economy is bringing about kind of prosperous lifestyle for a lot of people, Rome has gone on to conquer, like we said, the vast majority of Europe and other, you know, other parts of the world, Northern Africa, into the Middle East also. Um, those people that live in these places are not used to the level of stability and prosperity that they're experiencing. Um, a lot of them had been living under tyrannical governments or, you know, unstable environments. And the reign of the Roman Empire and, you know, then the Pax Romana um, brings about a level of stability that is not familiar to these to a lot of these people um, for a long time. So as stability and kind of order reign in society in general, this gives people an opportunity to kind of look inward into their own affairs. Um, when you don't have to worry so much about things, you know, what's happening outside of your door, your front door, and you're kind of confident that there is safety and security and stability there, you can kind of turn your attention inwards and kind of um, bring about the the development of uh, a, a more stable and prosperous family life also. So we're going to see... Um, you know, an increase in population, even, per, you know, per capita, the size of the average family will grow. Um, a lot of that is due to the fact that because of the prosperity, um, people have the resources to support larger families um, also. So that's a big part of it. So this is really, you know, political, uh, social and economic impact. So these are in this class period, what we're looking at is really just kind of the big picture kind of impact of the Pax Romana more so than anything else. As we move forward, we will kind of focus in on some of the more specific, um, you know, features of the Pax Romana, but we want to start by just getting an idea of what the general kind of impact of the Pax Romana is with regard to um, political, economic, and social aspects of life.